Hey, what's good, my fellow masters? The Olympus part of the Road to 7 series of campaigns was officially announced to start September 30th, 2100 PDT. In my recent SQ savings video, I had guessed the beginning of October timeframe for this particular campaign, which it is essentially. The duration for the campaign will be one week, ending on October 7th, 2059 PDT. Very similar to the currently ongoing Atlantis campaign, this will provide an opportunity for masters that are newer or just a little behind on the main story to catch up. For the duration of this campaign, AP costs will be just a quarter of what they are normally for main quests of Part 1 and Part 2, including the Olympus chapter. Though this does not include the main story quests from Part 1.5 Epic of Remnant, nor free quests. However, speaking about free quests, the ones found within Lost Belt 5 Olympus will have their AP costs reduced to half for their first clears. So if you still have some free quests from Olympus to do, this will be a great time to get those first clear SQ rewards from them, increase the number of overall free quests cleared, and possibly get more SQ from a related extra master mission. Also for this campaign period, related servants to the Olympus story chapter will get a 30% bonus to their bond points gained, but only when used to clear any of the free quests within Olympus. So if you have any of the related servants, it might be a good way to gain some SQ from bond levels if you happen to have some skill or ascension material needs specific to the Olympus free quests. We probably still have a good couple of weeks before the next event anyways, so feel free to farm. More on the topic of LB5 Olympus related servants, their interlude and rank up quests will cost only half AP for the duration of this campaign. Of course, related to this is the special unlock condition for the interludes of these servants. For Dios Curry, Romulus Kyrnus, Sherlock Holmes, Canis, and Caligula, regardless of whether you have these servants or meet their usual quest requirements, their interludes will be available to you, which means you may be able to gain up to six quarts, depending on if you've completed them in the past already. And please remember, the special unlock condition only applies to these servants' interlude quests and not their rank up quests. Still on the topic of Olympus related servants, their enhancements will have a double chance of any super or great successes. Plus, they will gain double the XP for members used in these enhancements. So if you need to level up any of these servants, now would be a good time if you have the means. And the last thing about Olympus related servants during this campaign, when they are chosen from your friend's support to fill out your party, double friend points will be awarded. Likewise, if your friends choose them from your support sets. One of the main components from the Road to Seven campaigns are the recollection quests. As we have come to expect, there are six quests altogether, three of which are the normal versions of these selectively picked Olympus boss battles, rewarding a combined three summon tickets once cleared. And three more super recollection versions that have extremely beefed up HP numbers for the enemies found within these battles. Clear these super versions for a combined reward of 30 Stargazer Teapots. There are also some Olympus campaign related limited master missions. Obtain 3 Beast's Footprints, 5 Leyline Stones, 5 Teapots, and 1 HP and Attack 4 Star Foe Card by clearing Section 1 of Lost Belt 5 Olympus, along with clearing 3 free quests in said Lost Belt. Just a quick note on the usage of the Leyline Stones and Stargazer Teapots. Both items have a usage period which will end on October 14th. Past that, those items gained from this campaign will disappear from your inventory. So please try to use them before that time. The Leyline Stones are so handy to help get past a particularly difficult main story battle, avoiding the use of three simultaneous command spells, or worse, avoiding the use of precious Saint Quartz. Likewise, the double bond point boost from Teapots can quickly provide you with more quartz from increased servant bond levels. More so if you can leverage the bond bonus the related Olympus servants get during this campaign as well. A Rediscover Lost Belt 5 Olympus special video will play when first opening up the game once this campaign starts. It can be rewatched from the material section of your My Room location of the game, though note that the video will be removed once the campaign ends. Those that have yet to play through Olympus, please keep in mind the video will contain spoilers. And fortunately, there will be an option to skip the video. For masters who may have missed out the first time, the three-star command code, one who shoulders the mother goddess, will be permanently added to the mana prism shop. 
you will be able to purchase one copy of it from there for 300 mana prisms. Its effects are nice, being a 5% increase to critical strength, along with recovering 100 HP when the engraved card is used to attack. Finally, on September 30th when this campaign starts, there will be a YouTube premiere of a special broadcast recording of a Lost Belt Spotlight talk show discussing Olympus. This was originally aired in JP during early October of 2022. The guests on the talk show were Chiaki Kobayashi, who voices Bartholomew Roberts, and Satoshi Suruoka, who voices Caligula, among other FGO servants. I find the voice actor stories and insights always interesting in these types of broadcasts, so if you're interested in checking this out, the video can be found on Aniplex USA's YouTube channel, and I'll have that link in the description as well. Careful though, as it is a sort of retrospective, there may be spoilers discussed. That covers this particular campaign's details and goodies, but what about the related summoning banner? Well, there will be four SSRs that will be on rate up, one limited, two permanent, and one story locked, plus two SRs along for the ride, one permanent, and one story locked. First up on the banner rate up schedule is the permanent SSR AoE buster Rider Europa. This very maternal acting goddess will be available from September 30th to October 3rd. Now, if you really want her but just can't afford to roll for her at this time, then not to worry as Europa will always have a rate up during the annual Valentine's event rotating banner. Europa will be partnered up with the story locked SR AoE Buster and Lancer, the fiery and volatile Canis. If Canis is a particular SR unit you desire, then this could be quite the tempting opportunity to roll for her given how infrequently specific story-locked SR servants are on rate-up. However, you will have another chance to roll for Lancer Canis during the 2026 New Year's Summoning Campaign. The next 5-star unit on the banner schedule is the story-locked SSR AoE Buster Archer, Nikola Tesla. This alternating current adult inventor will be available from October 2nd until the 5th. Unlike story-locked SRs, the story-locked 5-star servants can always be counted to be on rate-up during either the Valentine's or the Caldea Boys events that occur every year. In Nicola's case, this would be the Caldea Boys collection event held every March. So if you really want him, but need to pass this time, there will be other chances. Nicola will also have another banner during the NeroFest Battle New York 2022 summoning campaign rerun expected around May of 2025. The SR to accompany Nicola, probably to keep him under control, is the permanent AoE caster Helena Blavatsky. This Mahatma-obsessed support DPS caster can be extremely useful for those with smaller servant rosters, but given how Helena can potentially spook on almost any given banner, rolling for her specifically is probably not warranted. There will be other support units on rate up in a few months that would probably be a better use of SQ. That said, Helena doesn't seem to be on any known future banners at this time. Next up on the rotation is the limited SSR AoE Buster and Lancer, Romulus Kyrnus. This divine personification of Rome itself will be on rate up from October 3rd to the 6th. If you want to wait for the next opportunity Romulus is on rate up, that will be during the New Year's 2026 summoning campaign. Which, if he's someone you really like, might be too long to wait for. But if you're just looking to add an AoE SSR Lancer to your roster, there are a bunch coming up in the next 2-3 to three months, and personally, my pick would be Melusine. Canis will also be on rate up with Romulus, making things a little more interesting when a gold Lancer card appears as you are rolling. Last up on the banner schedule is the permanent SSR single target saber, the Dios Curry. The famous Gemini twins will be on rate up from October 6th to the 9th, and similar to Europa, they will always be available to summon when the Valentine's event comes around each year. Additionally, they will also be a part of the Caldea Boys event that occurs each March as well. A nice aspect to the FGO version of the twins being brother and sister. Canis will again be the SR when it's Dios Curry's turn on the banner rotation. And that wraps up this overview of the Road to 7 Lost Belt 5 Olympus campaign and summoning banner. I know it's been several months or so since I've been regularly uploading videos, but these campaign overviews were always something I liked to cover. I figured that sometimes it's a bit easier to listen to someone talk about it while you're doing another task. And I really wanted to at least convey the information about the next opportunities to roll for the servants coming up on this campaign's summoning banner. 
My hope is to make planning for these things just a little bit easier. At any rate, I hope you found something in this video helpful. Please leave a like if you did or just enjoyed it in general. And until the next one, thanks for watching.